Hello and welcome to the Finance Quarter. I'm Andrew Robertson, sitting with some machines whose days could soon be numbered, but more on that in a few minutes. In the last month or so, global financial markets have been extremely volatile in response to a statement by US Federal Reserve Chairman Dr Ben Bernanke that he can see the US economy improving to the point where stimulus measures could be eased. In theory, that should be good for the stock market in particular, but the reaction to Dr Bernanke's statement has been anything but good. Well, to find out why this has happened, I spoke with Sydney-based fund manager Roger Montgomery. Roger, all the textbooks tell us that share prices are a reflection of a company's future earnings. Yet when Ben Bernanke said back in June that he saw the US economy improving and the, therefore the prospects for US companies' earnings improving, the stock market tanked. Why did that happen? Well, one of the things that the textbooks don't teach is that share prices are influenced not only by a company's earnings, um, but they're also influenced by relative valuations. Oh, and I say relative, what I mean is price compared to the true value of the business. And in the short run, there's no relationship between all of those things. So in the short run, the stock market really is just a popularity contest. It's only over the long run that share prices accurately reflect uh, the value of a business which is based on its future earnings. So it could be that in this particular case that share prices went down if only because people might have been expecting a lot more from Ben Bernanke than what he gave. We've heard lots of talk about imbalances in financial markets because of all the quantitative easing or money printing that's been going on in the United States. Did that contribute to what happened? Well, it's still contributing. In fact, um, in fact $85 billion worth of bonds are being bought um, every month. Uh, and it's a huge amount of money. Um, what the market is currently afraid of is that that, that addiction to the money printing that they have, um, they're worried that the syringe is going to be taken away and Ben Bernanke has, has alluded to the prospect of what's now referred to as tapering of that bond buying program such that it might stop completely in the middle of 2014. That's what the stock market is afraid of. But while the punch bowl is still being um, delivered and filled, uh, the party continues. And yet I go back to my first point that the reason Ben Bernanke is thinking of tapering or reducing the bond buying is because he sees the economy standing on its own two feet. Yes, which, which is a good thing. Um, but prices have, prices have been um, buoyed, if you like, by, uh, by this money printing and by the excess cash that's in the, in the financial system. Uh, and if that's pulled away, there'll be a fear that uh, that money needs to be paid back and share prices may fall. So if you like, a person A is trying to guess what person B, C and D are going to do with B, C and D guessing what A is trying to do at the same time. So where do company earnings come into the equation? Well, in that very long term, they, that's what matters the most. And the US is in, a, in an enviable position compared to, for example, Australia, um, because they benefit, companies in the United States benefit from very, very low labour rates, which uh, companies in Australia can't enjoy the benefit of. And so um, earnings in the United States have been going up. And over the long run, I suspect that they'll continue to do very, very well. America is, a, is an amazing centre of innovation globally, and, and it'll continue to be the case that it, the economy improves over time. It's just that when the when the, the, the punch bowl is taken away, the party might end for a while and people head home. So what I hear you saying is that if the US economy does have a sustained recovery, then share prices will go with it. That, that's absolutely right. But over the very long run, what we know is that the stock markets, the, the, the total capitalisation of the stock market, the total market value of the stock market, can't exceed a given percentage of the economy because if it continues to grow, eventually it becomes the entire economy. So over the long run, it, it, it sits at a, say, 30% of the total economy or thereabouts. That's about the average. Uh, and, and at the moment, it's at about that average. So, so it, it's not particularly expensive. And over the long run, I think as the economy improves, so will the stock market. But that's not to say that in the short run, there won't be bumps along the way. So if you're a small investor looking at what's happening on stock markets at the moment, should you look through that and try and see the longer term? Absolutely. You should always invest, irrespective of your age, you should always invest with the long term in mind. Don't think of the stock market as a place to bet on up or down, but think of the stock market as a place to invest in sound businesses. The only caveat to that is you want to take advantage of the opportunity to buy those businesses at very cheap prices. So the best time to be enthusiastic about the stock market is when no one else is. And at the moment, everyone's pretty enthusiastic about the stock market. 
And just finally, we've heard a lot about bond prices in recent weeks and if interest rates go up that bond prices will fall and that bonds are just a catastrophe waiting to happen. Do you share that view and what will it mean for the man or woman in the street? Well, what we've been taught is that bonds are low risk and that's not true. Bonds are very high risk when interest rates are very low for two reasons. The first reason is that when interest rates are extremely low, you're getting a very low rate of return on your money. In fact, so low, particularly in the United States and here in Australia, that if you owned a bond for 10 years, you're almost guaranteed to have less purchasing power at the end of the 10 years than you had at the start. In other words, whatever restaurant you could afford to go to today, you won't be able to afford to go to that same restaurant in 10 years time if you're invested in bonds. And that's one of the reasons people have poured their money into shares. And that's one of the reasons people have poured their money into shares. Correct. The other risk is that with interest rates very, very low, when they go up, there's an inverse relationship between the price of a bond and the interest rate. If interest rates go up after you've purchased a bond, then the next person who wants to buy your bond wants a higher interest rate. So they won't pay as much for your bond. The bond price goes down. So a lot of people who've invested in bonds believing that they're safe are not only going to lose purchasing power, but they could have a capital loss as well in the interim. Roger Montgomery, thank you very much for explaining that. It's a pleasure.